Hello, gentle viewers. This is Out Guardian, welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 25 with the Boston Braves in our early integration series. <clears throat> Welcome back, everybody. Um, we had a lovely vacation. Uh, we went to New Orleans for the first time, uh, and we saw some really cool stuff. And if you are, pro tip, if you decide you want to visit New Orleans, make sure you stay downtown. Uh, we stayed outside the city, and it made it hard to get downtown to actually stuff we wanted to see. Um, so I actually ended up cutting our vacation a little bit short, but that's okay. Um, we saw a good time here back at home, and I recommend it if it's something that you would like to experience. Uh, so, in our last episode, because it's been a minute, we got destroyed in the World Series. Like The Yankees didn't even give us a moment's peace. Um, it was competitive throughout, but we still got beat four to one. And so we must endure. We must once again find our way back to the top. Step one is going to be setting up our coaching staff, especially for our brand new AAA franchise, the Montreal Royals. Oh, man, that is so broken. We just walk with Joe DiMaggio just for the fun of it. That's great. Um, let us get our coaching staff set up. What are we missing first coaching-wise? I just need the best possible coach. Um, I don't really care about temperament right now. I care about the best possible coach. Excuse me. I mean, I think John Callahan is just about perfect. He covers all the areas we don't have covered. He's not an outstanding developer. But I still think this is the right call. Let's get us some John Callahan in our lives. Add him as our first base coach. Done. But I need to outfit our minor league team. And I think that either means Rube Eldridge or George Mogridge. The benefit of picking George Mogridge is he has some capability to teach hitters, which Eldridge doesn't. So I think we go ahead and do that. Let's hire him as our manager, or at least offer him the contract. Here's where we get Eldridge. Because we want nice young coaches that can develop over time and be a useful resource to us going forwards. And then Kearney, I guess, is the best choice. I'm less enthused about him being a hitting coach, but it's worth it, I suppose. Um, Let's take a quick tour through the team. I am pretty happy with last season's team. There's not a ton of places I can look at this team and say, yes, we can do better somewhere. I genuinely don't see it. Um, We could use more frontline pitching talent. I think that's what got us in the World Series, that we didn't have the horses that we have previously had. We have good pitchers, but we don't have great pitchers, although Slim Jones is certainly one of them. Um... I genuinely don't know what we do with Hal Trotsky. I genuinely do not know what we can do with him. Because Lou Gehrig ain't going anywhere, and Trotsky can't play anywhere, but no, he can't play the outfield. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tear apart the team yet, but ball player shilling is probably on borrowed time anyway. Um plus I got Joe DiMaggio. That's good that's gonna be a sick outfield. Um
he's a perfectly acceptable center fielder. I don't see the need to to kick Damari out of center field. Let's try to get ourselves another starting pitcher. Or actually, maybe we don't need one. We've got a lot of really good pitchers. Maybe we're okay? Look, we're at the point where I would just be, I would just be stockpiling people in AAA. Or in whichever. Um, for the future. Maybe that's fine. Uh, let us go ahead immediately and start, um, let's see who's available. All leagues, at least 50 potential. And let's look at pitchers. I mean, there are 380 pitchers sitting, waiting for somebody to claim them. Is there a reason not to? I mean, there is the money. I can't afford to pay these insane sums every single day. Yeah, they're only 20000 plus, and I, I'm fine with them getting their bag, but I don't think that's... I think that's the right call. Hugh Casey is a much better choice, in my opinion. I don't think he's ever going to be sensational, but I think he could be good enough. And I'm willing to pay 5500 to find out. 6200 excuse me. So there's that. I mean, there is Johnny Vandermeer, he who threw two shutouts in a period there. I need a big stuff guy. I think Vandermeer would be a pretty good choice as well, or more Cooper. I, I mean, I know the answer is why not both. I'm trying to avoid doing it, but I think I will go ahead and do it. Like, this is literally the only way we can reliably bring in great talent, so I think this is an appropriate decision to make. Here we go. Done. Plus, every picture that I acquire is one that the AI can't, and so I think that's beneficial to us as well. Let's look at hitters now. Are there any other people we should grab and stash in the minor leagues? Nick Atten. I like how Nick Atten is a third baseman that plays right field. He's a pretty good hitter. Um, he's actually fairly talented when it comes to hitting. He's got decent power. He's got really good batting eye, potentially. Okay contact. I think it just makes sense to have him. Again, there's no downside to it, right? Like, there's literally no downside. <clears throat> I don't need a first say son, and I won't need one anytime soon. Goody Rosen? Eh, I don't know about that one. Future manager, Cookie Lavagato? He's a decent hitter, but he's not a second baseman. I think if maybe if he works on that, then we could potentially revisit. We could bring in the other Dimaggio, but I think someone like Frankie Corsetti is far more useful. I need more infield talent in my system. One of the worst things I never anticipated about when we did this series isn't how many Negro Leaguers are playing in the major how many major leaguers are playing in the Negro Leagues, which is kind of cool. Um, it's definitely different. Yeah, we'll go and we'll, we'll add in Crosetti. For sure. The fans, they love them some Crow. Um, do we go for Vince DiMaggio? I don't think so. I don't think there's any benefit to it right now. Yeah. 
Okay, we have an embarrassment of riches in terms of great young prospects, and I think that's going to be critical since we're not going to be drafting all that well anytime soon. How much are the Yankees charging per ticket? They're at a dollar thirty. I still think a dollar is perfectly reasonable. Uh, let's advance time a bit and go from there. Um, <clears throat> I will offer you more money. That's perfectly fine with me. Now, George is our new first base coach, right? No, he's our manager in Triple A. That's right. I will pay you $1,500 to be my first base coach because you're perfect. You're exactly what I need in a first base coach. Oh my god, you're not getting better offers. You want to be a bench coach. I get it. I will pay you 2000 to be a first base coach and give you pride of place. He just wants more money. Because he's not, you'll notice his position isn't changing. He just wants more money. Which is reasonable. I don't begrudge him that. Really, Kearney? Can all of you fuckers quit trying to hold me over a damn barrel? You're not getting better offers. I will pay you $3,000. Now stop fucking around and take my money. <clears throat> so we got Kearney, but Callahan hasn't responded, which means somebody else has probably signed him. Be the manager of the fucking Tigers. You asshole. I bet somebody else signed to Eldridge, too, because he hasn't gone back to us since I increased his salary. Yeah, he got a job as the manager of the Cardinals. <sighs> this needs to be fixed. And I know it's some minor complaint of all the things, but it, it really sucks when the game's like, I've got a better offer. You need to tell me what that offer is. Then I don't waste my time. Uh, there's just no excuse for it. There's no excuse for it. It's not fun. It's not interesting. It's annoying. To have to fight, fight around for this long. I mean, ball player fuck is a perfectly good consolation prize, but it's not what I wanted. Anyways. Yeah, that's just so disingenuous. He's saying, I got a better opportunity. What's the opportunity? Like, they're going to tell you that in real life. They're not going to keep that a secret. All these pitching coaches suck. I mean, I guess he's super young, so he could get better, so I guess we'll do it. Um, but yeah, I, I know I've gripped about it every single episode. I'll probably gripped about it again in the future, but that just seemed like such a simple thing. That, yeah. It seems like it's unnecessary. Anyways, um, Let's go ahead and set up our... Oh, we're still waiting for our first case for first case. That's right, because the fucking tiger stole one. Don't fuck with me, Turner. Don't fuck with me. I know damn good well no one is hiring you to be a major league pitching coach right now. Just don't fucking lie to me. Oh, we got a gold glove for Van Mungo. Nice. That's lovely. I enjoy that. Turner signed Silver Sluggers, Lou Gehrig, Stan Hack, Lynn Larry, and Ballplayer Schilling. All excellent choices. Because Trotsky is so young, I don't feel the need to get rid of Schilling yet. But his time with the Braves is probably numbered. Probably numbered. All right, let us zippity doo da along the road. Uh, I have some that's DFA too. Oh, all these guys, right? Put them all in AAA for right now. And then I do need to get rid of some AAA players, so we're gonna do some classic calling of the minors.
what does that get me down to? It gets me down... <clears throat> I'll let the AI figure out what they want to do with it. Because very few players are ever going to be a big deal in the major leagues. I guess maybe we just... No, I want to wait. I want to wait for sure. Oh, if we don't put him, we'll lose him in the Rule 5. That's not ideal. I didn't want to... I don't want to add him yet. But I guess I'll do it. Done. Uh, Roy Parmalee was reliever of the year. Big old, big old crow. I uh, was PCL player. Nice of the year. Wait, how did I get an achievement for that? What? It says it won the rookie of the year award, which hasn't happened yet. Or did I win it and the game is just... Oh, he got Rookie of the Year. I thought he got Reliever of the Year. That makes total sense. I can read. No, I can't. I've been lying to you this whole time. I'm just guessing, but all this wiggles me. Manager of the Year. Fuck yeah. Oh, let's cast our ballot. Come on, Frank. Get in there. Chapman, Happy Felsch, Wilbur Cooper. Look, I'm basically keeping Harry Hooper on the ballot at this point. I don't think it's worth it. We'll go for Lefty Williams. I think that's reasonable. Zach Wheat, I think, deserves consideration, as is Wally Chang. Dutch Leonard. High Pockets Kelly was a Hall of Famer in real life. This version, not even close. Because if you look at High Pockets Kelly's actual statistics in Major League Baseball, maybe he made it as a manager. He actually wasn't that good a player, but I'm... I'm... Oh, I think George Cuz is one of the ones everyone hates. As one of the more crooked... Uh, inductions into the Hall of Fame. That makes sense. He was part of John McGraw's Giants, and they got a lot of people that, quite frankly, they didn't deserve. A Lou Gehrig won an MVP. Of course he did. Ball player Schilling will never be worth more than he is right now. Like, his only problem historically was he didn't get regular playing time. Plus, he's playing in our band box of the park. I want to get Trotsky more at bats. But I don't think it's time yet. I think we hang on to him for now. And let Trotsky continue to develop with more limited playing time. I still think that's our best choice long term. Um, I don't care if there's any of these fuckheads. Uh, who cares? I sure don't. What do I want in the draft? I could use a baseball player. What did you fucking do in the offseason, Stan Hack? Running away from the police? What the fuck, man? Oh, shit. Ah! I always forget this is a thing now. We have to get this done. I'm such a potato. I am maximum potato. Oh, uh, more Cooper, you're going to work on control. And you're going to work on it super hard. How? I think play discipline makes the most sense for you. Let's do that. Uh, Nick Atten has it for contact. It's going to be challenging, but we're going to try it. 
Johnny Vandermeer also going to work on a control. Uh, Cecil Travis definitely needs to work on defense at third base. And then... Where's DiMaggio? Like, he's definitely a prospect. I definitely want him training. I wanted to pick up a new position. Although, the other alternative is he improves his power. But I think his hitting will come naturally. I'd rather he focuses on maybe picking up center field in case that gets us the most utility down the road. I've got to remember to do that, like, every single time. You know what I'm going to do? I don't normally do this. Create? No. And this is going to be practice facility. And then let's do it as October 1st. And every 365 days. And we're going to do set up your off season complex, you big dummy. There, perfect. So now, beginning October 1st, 1933, and then every 365 days afterwards, we should get a reminder. Um, so I stopped forgetting. I've got to see significant results, but it doesn't mean that it can't happen. Um, because we're picking so low in the draft, we basically have to take the best player available and just ignore positions. I think that's, that's the key for us to get the best players we can. Oh, this is a bad draft. This is a really bad draft. Yeah. Roy Henshaw is a really good pitcher. Like, really, really good. And he's pretty close to Major League ready. Let's do it. There's never a bad time to add on a top quality reliever if one is available. Um, I love Ray Dandridge's positional flexibility. He's not a great hitter, but he's really smart. And so the fact the guy can play catcher and shortstop is pretty nuts. And I think that makes him a perfect fit for us. He wants a lot of money. I have it. I will pay it. Uh, let's look for the miscast pitchers. I could go for Clarence Griffin. I'll offer you your, your slot. That's fine. I don't really care at this point. Like, the decent players are all gone already. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and let us end our commercial draft. These drafts have been disappointing, but that's because a lot of the best players are going into either the Negro Leagues or the independent minor leagues. Um, I was going to say Ted Williams hasn't come out yet, but I think he will be coming out relatively soon. Uh, he wants $84. That's fine.
I can spend $72 on that, but I'm not going to spend money on these Ledger 2 Joker, jo Jokers. Like, Stan Sperry is uninteresting. Yeah. That's not going to happen, guys. That's not going to happen. What do I even want in the Rule 5? I don't think I want anything in the Rule 5. I don't think there's going to be an interesting player that's worth grabbing, in my opinion. There isn't. I'm just not going to even bother. I lost Comer Cox. I mean, he's a really good defensive third baseman, so I can see that there's appeal there, but he's not. He's never going to make my team. Uh, he's got two third basemen ahead of him, so I'm not concerned about that in the slightest. I wonder if Homer and Baker actually gets to make the Hall of Fame this, this time. He did, finally. I was happy Felsch didn't make it faster, but that's okay. Weren't you one of the Black Sox? Yeah, you were. You were out of baseball. Um, as a result of it. There we go. Um, yeah, let's just zippity goo da along the way here. Uh, what did you learn? What position to first base is what you gave him? Not what I was anticipating. Uh, that's ungood. I don't hate it. But it's not such I was hoping they would teach him. I thought they would teach him center field. Anyways. Um go ahead and work on your base running fundamentals. That's fine. Slim Jones is already maxed out. Uh he's going to the major leagues. I did not anticipate that, that he would instantly improve to that level. Um, to work on Cecil Travis's base running. Yeah, I think we do. Done. I think how Rayleigh Slim Jones is like, oh yeah, baseball, I can do that. <sighs> Uh, let's go ahead and set up our staff roles now. Um, I want William Ross to teach base running. And teach the outfield. Which then frees up Kruger to teach the infield. That's really good. Like, that's, that's really good. Up and down. I guess I could... No, you're gonna, we're going to have Falk teach catching, and then that way Kruger can cover base running. That's really good. I think that's an excellent group of coaches we have here. Um, oh no. Anyway. It doesn't really matter that I missed a couple of weeks because they weren't going to be eligible anyway. You've cut my budget for some reason because you're a jerk, probably. Yeah, we're still making money. Got better base running, always appreciated. Van Mungo just instantly turns into a super ace. That's pretty wild. We're going to have an embarrassment of riches. Uh, oh, he's getting worse at center field. That is less good. That creates a situation I have to address. 
Um, if he cannot play center field, Frank Damari is far less useful to me. It's so many Chapman and Schilling in the corners. Chapman can't play center either. Oh my gosh. I don't have a center fielder anymore. That is the fucking worst. And do we teach Joe DiMaggio center? No, we taught him first fucking base. Yes, that's what he needs to learn. Tommy Thompson isn't a terrible defensive center fielder, but Lord knows he can't swing a bat very effectively. Who is freely available? MLB, no, I won't find a player. I want hitters. I don't care what your overall is, but I want you to have a I want you to have at least 50 overall. Play center field. And at least 50 as a defender. What do we got here? I don't want Roy Johnson playing center field. That seems like a terrible idea. Nobody's going to trade these guys to me. Like, they would be insane if they did. Huh. That worked out. Um... You want it for Josh Gibson? Uh, done. Like, Berger is just better. He's a good center fielder. He's got a ton of power. He's going to be successful in Boston. <clears throat> Yeah, that's just the right decision. That was an easy choice. Oh, that said Van Mungo was an 80 overall now. Did I miss that? His potential is an 80 overall. Key distinction, but still excellent news. <clears throat> um, What else do we trade? I don't think we trade anything else right now. <sighs> Trotsky is a lefty, and our park doesn't like lefties as well. I think we need to see him play a bit more before I'm going to give up ball player shilling for him. I think that is reasonable. Uh, players want to get some reps in, in spring training. Um, Cooper, Atten, Vandermeer, DiMaggio, Henshaw... Tamulis, Travis, and Casey. I'm going to let my my lovely bench coach who's going to set up his rotation the way he wants. We're going to do a five-man rotation in the... That's crazy. I mean, I'm going to say Dizzy Dean is our fourth starter, not Bill Swift. But I'm still here for it. Lineups have at it. <clears throat> Interesting that the game situation is to bench Lynn Leary for Frank Corsetti. I don't know that I agree with that. But it is a consideration for sure. I mean, Lynn Leary's big issue is going to be at one point he's going to stop drawing walks. And then his offense is he's going to disintegrate. 
Um, we'll see. We will absolutely see how things work out given time. Uh, it's only a week. I don't really care. I guess the question is, do we keep Paltrowski in the minor leagues? <clears throat> um, I've let him continue to develop in AAA. Interesting, he's losing the velocity and becoming a better pitcher. That's really good to hear. GZ Dean got better. More Cooper got a tiny bit better. New Casey. It's about time Luger got better. Jake Dunn got a lot worse. Wally Berger got worse. Hmm. Problematic. Our old pal Heine Mueller is now randomly playing third base. That's funny. Oh, those are different guys. Sorry. Why do I care about this? Mel Amato was on my short list for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. We're about to have a crisis of defense. We've got a lot of players that got worse at defense, and that is not amazing news. Cooper improved his control. Trotsky got significantly better play discipline. Everyone did better. Very nice. Oh, let's get the roster set up. I want to have 10 to 11 pitchers. So nine pitchers, eight pitchers got to go. Uh, Cooper to the minors. Tamulis, Vandermeer to the minors. Uh, Clarence White is what we call released. Like, he he adds nothing to the table. It does not look like he get much better. Really? Why? They have non-guaranteed salaries. We'll just bury him in the minors. That's fine. Minor leagues... Minor leagues, what am I at now? 13 pitchers, let's get rid of two more of them. Minors. <clears throat> Minors. Done. Um, let me rebuild the team the way I want it built. First of all, are other teams using four or five man rotations? Everyone's at five now. Okay. I don't need 11 pitchers. I want the 15 position players. Let's send down Leroy Matlock, too. There you go. Done. Okay. Pitching ratings. I think Dizzy Dean has to be opening day starter. He is he's the veteran in this rotation. He's given us three quality years. I assume a reason why he hasn't earned the, the honor of pitching the opening day start. Um then Slim Jones, then Van Mungo. Mm, no, Parmalee, then Mungo. And then Bill Swift will capably serve as our fifth starter. With 
Daisy Dean as our opening day starter. Bullpen wise, Leon Riley did an amazing job last year. I've seen a reason why I can't do that again. Let's go ahead and make him our stopper. Um, Satchel Page is going to be our emergency starter. Slash long man. Roy Henshaw is going to be a middle reliever that also specializes in getting out lefties. Tom Jackson is going to be a long man that avoids high leverage. I don't like his low control. I think that's going to make him dangerous when he doesn't actually have good strikeout abilities either. And then Jim Willis is just going to be flat out middle relief slash long relief. Okay, pitching staff is D-U-N done. I still have a bunch of players to get rid of. We got rid of seven position players. McDuffie... Gulick, Dimaggio, Patton. Roy Johnson is such a good hitter. I feel like we need him on our bench. Even if he's not happy that he's not starting, I think he'll get over it. Uh, Ed Coleman can go to the minors. I now participated Crosetti starting already. Um... Crosetti can play two positions. I wouldn't object to him learning. Oh my god, Dorosky. I can't keep that on the bench. You're better than Schilling. I could platoon you, potentially. I guess that would be reasonable. But you're too good. You're too good a hitter to be rotting on the pine right now. Alright. Let's clear all lineups. Uh, let me first make sure that everyone who needs to make the roster does make the roster, which I think is only going to be Roy Henshaw. Because everybody else is already on the roster. Alright. <clears throat> Let's freaking go. Ben Chapman is the quintessential leadoff hitter. I don't know why the game keeps trying to put him anywhere but leadoff, but that's where he started. He's our leadoff guy. Dan Hack is going to be our number two hitter as far as getting on base effectively. So question is, who hits third? It's Lou Gehrig. I don't know why that was the question for even a moment. It's Lou Gehrig. Then the question is, who hits cleanup? It could be Berger, it could be Trotsky, and it could be Schilling. So I guess now we make the tough decision. Do we keep Schilling? And if so, how do we deploy him to his best advantage? This is hard. I am deeply concerned about this park swallowing Trotsky's power. That is my biggest number one concern. Whereas Schilling should flourish. This is fucking hard, yo. I genuinely don't know what the right answer is.
I wish I had a DH right now. Um... I feel like platooning shilling is a waste of shilling's talents. I think it's gotta be shilling. It's gotta be shilling. Even against right-handed pitching. And we just let it, maybe let Trotsky sub in pretty regularly, but that means Berger hits fifth, which I'm perfectly content with. Um, so who hits sixth? Shinty Hogan seems like a good choice hit sixth. What if we play Lynn Leary at second and let Crosetti handle short or vice versa? I'm going to play Crosetti at second. Or am I going to play him at short? No, I'll play him at short. And then Larry can hit second. Can play second base. There you go. Because I have no doubt Lynn Larry can pick it up quite quickly. And this lets Jake Dunn be a super sub, which I think is incredibly useful. Because he can play every position, including center field. He may even end up being a center fielder at some point. So I think this makes sense. Let's turn our depth chart and how often are we benching people for Trotsky. Uh, this is definitely a starter tired. I want Larry playing second base. So the real question is this. Are Wheel Kev Trotsky coming into left field that frequently? I don't think so. Because Chapman is that much more important to me. Um, here we go. Every four games. So what'll happen is Chapman and Schilling will Chapman will take over right, and Trotsky will play left every four games. I like that a lot, actually. I like that a lot. <clears throat> Let's just copy it over. It is possible that just like Gehrig, Trotsky's power is so elite that he'll still hit 20 to 30 homers. But he doesn't have the high end that Schilling does. This is this works for me. It's gonna get Trotsky a couple hundred at bats, maybe even let's see. I four games is 40. Yeah, it's gonna get between 150 to 200 at bats. And that's assume nothing happens in Chapman or Schilling. If it does, he takes on a larger role. That feels appropriate. I'm ready. I'm I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Joe Dimaggio can't crack the top ten. Huh? But is Joe DiMaggio not counted as a prospect for some reason because he's been playing too long? That could be. He has been in pro baseball, so that's fair. We had 10 people in the top 100 prospects. That seems pretty good. That seems pretty good. Uh, 
All right, let us now play baseball. <clears throat> well, I guess it means Dom Gutteridge gets called up to fill in a, an infield spot, which doesn't feel great, but I think it's what has to happen. Yeah. Uh, so Lindley shifts back to shortstop. And Jim Dunn gets his old job back as our, or Jake Dunn gets his old job back as our second baseman. And I guess we let Eppley play it short too. And then add Gutteridge as our tertiary backup. And then let's copy over the depth chart. Because I just don't want to fuck with the depth chart. Um, just for three weeks when Chris said he should be back hopefully sooner rather than later. All right, player development. Van Mon goes adding velocity, which is terrifying. <clears throat> cool. Um. Slim Jones gets a shutout. Shutout, shutout, Gehrig, Player of the Week. Player of the Month is Lou Gehrig, unsurprising. We're just going to plow on through. I don't see any reason to, to stop yet. Okay, we get Crow back, which is great. Back to the miners with you. And here comes Crosetti. Is Lynn Larry handling second at all? Not really. But he's going to keep doing it. Crosetti back in to play shortstop. And then Mr. Jake Dunn takes over as our primary backup. There and there. And Mr. Apley takes over as our backup to the backup. And copy and paste. In terms of raw talent, there is no team major league vessel that has more talented players than us. We've done a great job of plumbing the the newer leagues as well as the minor as well as the independents to the point where I don't think any team can compete with us in raw talent. But just like Ohio State in football, that does mean they're going to win every game. That doesn't mean that a championship is guaranteed. Um, so so we had to work pretty hard to to get us where we need to be. So, how's it going this year? How are the erstwhile players of the Boston Braves performing? Our lineup is once again number one in the league. Our back half of the lineup isn't as good, but we need to keep a couple of things in mind. First of all, Chrisetti hasn't played the whole year. Second, um, 
Lynn Larry was always going to be a bit dodgy as a longtime prospect. We probably need a proper second baseman instead of Larry. Crosetti is fine. I have no problem with Crosetti. Um, Shanty Hogan is always going to be a difficult player to predict because all of his value comes from batting average. <laughs> Again, probably could use a long-term catcher. Gehrig, Hack, Chapman, Schillig, and Berger. Our top five are basically flawless right now. I mean, Stan Hack casually hitting for a 404 on base percentage is insane, and I love it. It just makes Gehrig and Schilling and Berger more dangerous. I kind of help but note that some of Schilling's power has disappeared. Remember what I've said repeatedly, though. What is the most unreliable source of power? A triple, which has disappeared this year. He's also not hitting 334. So, well, I think he's still a very valuable hitter. How is Trotsky doing? If we sort by batting stats, Woba. Um, Trotsky is brutalizing baseballs. He's getting on base at a very high clip. Is it his time? Is it Trotsky's time to have a full starting row role after 109 quality plate appearances where he gets on base, he hits for good average, he's got decent pop. His rake stats are off the charts. And then here's Schilling down here. I'm going to give it one more month. One more month to figure out what's going on there, and then we can go from there. How's our pitching staff doing? Our pitching staff is doing fine. Dizzy is off to a rough start, despite not allowing very many home runs. It's not clear why, though. His BABIP is up. That's literally the entire reason. He's actually having a phenomenal season. It just doesn't look like his ERA is high-ish. Uh, great points is here. Bill Swift. That is unacceptable. Your literal fucking job is to throw strikes. This is not okay. Figure it out, shithead. Right now. Um, Yeah. Cool. On we go for now, but I do think Schilling's time in the major with the Boston Braves is getting limited. Unless he has a breakout July. Which he might. You can never tell. What is holding us back right now? I'm finding it fascinating that we're struggling to the degree that we are. And you're going to say, Avi, struggling is relative. You're having a phenomenal season. That's completely fair. Nice. Nice. Why are we struggling? Is it chilling? Shanty Ogan is now below replacement level. I need to upgrade a catcher. I'm constantly chasing new catchers, and I can't say that I approve of that. All right. Yeah, Lynn Larry is terrible. Um, this is going to happen eventually. That's fine. Um, I need second base. I need catching. I need those two positions, and I probably need to give Trotsky the keys now. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. It. We're going to do it full time. Get out there, champ. Play some right field.
Uh, Burger hits fourth for now. And then let's rebuild the death charts. Um, absolutely not. Schilling is not playing every other game. He has proven to be ineffectual. It's probably actually going to be traded here before too much longer. There we go. Um, let's upgrade catcher and second base if we can. Let's first check the freely available talent. Um, I want hitters at play. Let's start with second base. Literally nobody is available. Okay. Nobody is available, duly noted. Uh, catcher. Turns out finding catchers is equally hard. Um, so I guess since we have to trade, who's presently on the trade block? Mm. Nobody of note. Shilling is easily my most valuable trade commodity. Easily. And I've got enough depth in the outfield that if I lose Shilling, we're not that badly off. And I desperately need an upgrade in either second base. Or catcher, or both. I will take any position, but I want to start with second baseman. Who do we got here? Joe Cronin is an amazing baseball player. I see no reason not to take this deal. I'm overthinking this. Just fucking do it, dipshit. Okay, I will. That takes a positional weakness into a huge positional strength. There is literally no downside to having a player of Joe Cronin's accomplishments as our new second baseman. Or shortstop, but I'm going to play Cronin at second because I think that's where he fits in better. Uh, Cronin is definitely hitting higher in the order. That's a certainty. Okay. What do I have that I could theoretically trade in order to try to grab us a new catcher? Now we're getting to the point where I'm having to trade a prospect, and I don't feel great about that. Let's get rid of these fuckos. Oh, also all players. Yeah, let's go to the pitchers, too. There you go. Um, What is the most valuable thing that I could trade? Without hurting the team's long-term future. Probably JoJo White, who I think would be a pretty decent corner outfielder. But I don't think he's a center fielder. And so for me, he's less useful. What about catchers? There are no good catchers being offered up. I guess that's reasonable. 
And that instantly revitalizes this lineup in a lot of really important ways. And I am more than happy to keep running with this lineup and this rotation and see where we are in another month. That felt like a good decision. Um, and someone's going to overpay Schilling and regret it almost instantly. Uh, Lou Gehrig once again, biggest vote getter. Let's see, who do we got here? Slim Jones, Jim Willis. Interesting, but okay. Uh, Lou Gehrig, Stan Hack, Wally Berger. Done. Stan Hack has been a nice little piece for us. I had always anticipated him being a temp... Oh, and Frankie Crosetti makes the All-Star team in his rookie year. That's pretty good. That feels not bad. Nice. Okay. Let's get some coaches re-signed or fired as needed. Okay. Otto Kruger has been a phenomenal bench coach for us. I have no reason not to keep him done. Um, how good is Warren Gill? He is an amazing hitting coach. Done. How good is Justin Moore as a team turner? He's very good. I don't want to fuck stuff up, so I think we're going to go ahead and keep him around as well. Rubino and Newton can both get fucked. Um, now, it says team chemistry is, is an issue. What is the problem with team chemistry? How the fuck is Lou Gehrig disruptive? What? I mean, Daisy Dean's ass is going before Lou Gehrig's is, that's for sure. We don't have a captain. I guess that's something we could look into getting. Um, that's actually a really good idea. I'd like to get a backup catcher. If possible. And then... Let me add a filter. I think it's under... It's either in general miscellaneous. Player role. No, that's... Is he angry about his player role? That's not what I want at all. Relationship. I had to have missed it. Hang on. Is that it? Is captain. Yeah, here we go. A ball player Martel sucks, though. I mean, he's not the worst player in history, but let's look at all players. I could see signing Rube Wahlberg and turn him into a reliever just to get leadership on the team. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to do is I'm going to take... 
Continue to relieve her first things first. I'm going to put Tommy Thompson in the minors. No, I'm not. I'm going to trade Lynn Larry for a catcher. I like Earl Grace a lot, actually. Let's Let's get it. I've got to make a spot for him on the roster. Who is pitching the least right now? It's Tom Jackson. Let's send Tom Jackson to the minor leagues. Oh, Tom Jackson is really good at this team. I can't demote an all-star. That seems weird to me. But maybe that's the best what's best for the team. No, because I can carry an 11th pitcher if he's there for... Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not getting a genuinely good player for a catcher that isn't all that great. Yeah, Bill Perkins isn't terribly interesting. Glenn Might isn't a catcher. He's a good hitter. But he's not a catcher. Yeah, Pinky Hargrave is fine, but not exciting. William Smith isn't a catcher. I mean, a guy that can play... The middle infield and catch is objectively a good thing to have. So let's do it. Which doesn't actually solve the problem of making sure we have enough places to play for everyone. So I think now at this point, Epley goes to the minor league. And then Rube Wahlberg gets added to the roster, and everybody is happy. Uh, we have a specialist. It's great. New depth chart, please. Done. You're giving me Spud Davis, who's a good catcher. He's a very good catcher. He's an amazing catcher. I'm not giving you that much for him. Okay. Ready? Ready? No. I could give you Tamulis, Casey, and Morney, and somebody else, but that science will not be DiMaggio. That is a certainty. I will give you Cecil Travis. That I agree on. Done. There was literally one thing this team didn't have an all-star at, which was catcher, and we just got one in Spud Davis. That is so good. Um, this actually creates an interesting problem because I don't know where he hits in this lineup besides anywhere he wants to. He's going to hit sixth. Yeah, there we go. Like that. Plus, his name is Spud. How on earth could you argue with that? You can't. That's how. A 
that was not an insignificant amount of talent that just changed hands. But he's such a bloody good player that I don't give a fuck. He's exactly what I wanted. I wanted a superstar catcher, even at the expense of even at the expense of trading some prospects. And I think we made the exact right for right decision. A thousand percent. Twenty million percent. I literally do not know what to do after trade deadline, if anything. So I'm going to choose to do nothing. Um, unless somebody is going to be coming off the books. Chad Kimsey will. Chad Kimsey is thoroughly uninteresting. I mean, I guess I could trade him just for the lulls, but I doubt I'm going to get anything useful. Yeah, they're just gonna like, no, fuck you, dude. I'm just gonna skip the trade deadline. Already, my big trades are already done. Cronin and Davis are a fantastic combination of players to have. Um, yeah. Um, Lou Gehrig. Like how he's like, he's just now 30. He's having arguably the best year of his career. That's completely insane, guys. That's completely nuts. And I love it. I love everything about it. We've got to start making our move now. I genuinely cannot figure out why Brooklyn is so good this year. It genuinely does not make sense to me. Because nothing I'm seeing on the leaderboards tells me what Brooklyn is doing that I am not. I guess their pitching is marginally better. But... Like, nothing about this team strikes me as, holy shit, this is the team that should be going to the World Series. They were punching hugely above their weight, being mostly carried by Joe Medwick. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, but yeah, that it's, it vexes me that we are not in an, an NL pennant position because the Dodgers have committed acts of treason or something. I'm looking at expanded standings. I want to see what the what their Pythagorean differential is. We're two games unlucky. But that's wild. I can't figure it out. But I guess it's not really my job to figure it out. My job is just to make the team as good as it can be. Damn it. Wahlberg. And I guess thanks for the memories and shit, but I need a captain. Uh, we will start a charity. Good old Spud casually hits two homers in a game. Holy shit, man. Not too much chaining, except Joe Cronin being fucking awesome. We're going to want to work on second base in the offseason, but I'm really happy with what we've gotten out of him already. Joe Cronin got player of the month. I mean, he's hitting 400. That seems pretty good. That seems not terrible. Uh, Lucky Gomez, I'm going to put you on the roster, and we're going to make you into a middle reliever. Um, Any position players I want to give an, an extended audition to? I don't think I have any. Quit bringing me back to fucking Brooklyn. Oh, I didn't change it up here. That's on me. There you go.
Yeah, I don't see it. I don't see that any of my players in particular are need playing time in the major leagues. I just don't see it right now. Um, let's play this shit out. If we could get hot and stay hot right now, that would be delightful. If Lou Gehrig has an incredible last month of the season, there's a non-zero chance that he could win a triple crown. But I don't think he'll go reach the home runs. Is the shame of it because of his of our park? We won the pennant again. We're facing the Yankees again. I guess that's what really matters at the end of the day. But it is a little disappointing. It makes it a little bit sad that Lou Gehrig cannot win a triple crown. Ah, uh, but here we are. All he has to do, it's easy. He just has to hit six home runs in one game. How hard is that? How hard is that? It's obviously nothing could be easier than to hit six home runs in one game. Get after it, Lou Gehrig. Damn it. Oh, and I won a batting title. That's nice. And I guess he was the best player in the American League, but... He did not want a triple crown. That makes me sad. Could have, but did. Mm. Um. Mungo was a little bit more dominant this season than Parmalee, but I think I'm okay with letting him pitch there. Yeah. I'm okay with this. I'm gonna go four-man rotation. Yeah, I'm gonna go four-man rotation. Easy. And then Bilsa can just be another weapon in the bullpen for us. All right, gentlemen. Why the fuck is Roy Parmalee pitching? <clears throat> Let's try Dizzy fucking Dean, thanks. Oof. Why do you insist on always pitching Roy Parmalee? What is your fascination with him? Slim Jones is rested. We start Slim Jones. Damn. Fucking Yankees. Back off, man. Yeah, we're just getting obliterated by their hitting. While our own hitting has not been particularly impressive. We went a game. That's something. And, yeah, I mean, we didn't hit. We got three home runs all series. They got three from Babe Ruth alone. I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. Um, we ran into an incredibly hot team at the right time. And we just got boat, we got boat raced. Um, yeah. Fucking Yankees, back off, man. Hey, I didn't get my reminder. Oh no, because it's the 35 days from then. Yes, 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 that is fair. That is a loud garbage truck.
Let us break down how this season went. Let me actually quickly say the game. Um, how does the owner feel about us? He is very happy. Look okay. at it's been two years since he won. What the fuck, man? Settle the fuck down. Here's the problem, right? Our problem is we don't have much fan loyalty and our market size is pretty small. That's what's hurting our, our money. Like, that's the problem. I don't know how to fix that. I truly do not know how to fix that. Also, I love the fact, by the way, that Slim Jones made $15,000, but it's still an amazing value. Let's talk about the team and how players did and what we can expect for the future. Let's sort by war. Lou Gehrig is league MVP. Like, that's it. There's no other description. He's league MVP. And apart other than mine, he'd probably be pushing like 500 home runs right now. But as it is, yeah. He's, he's just now 30 years old and is almost certainly going into the Hall of Fame. That's insane. Even though he'll probably finish his career with less than 500 home runs. But I mean, he's also not going to die of ALS, so there's that. Spud Davis was an incredible pickup for us. And it solidifies catcher, so I don't have to worry about it again, at least for a while. Stan Hack was an afterthought when we acquired him. I was utterly convinced Cecil Travis would be a huge piece to our success in the future and that I didn't need a different third baseman. Stan Hack proved me wrong. He gets on base. He's got a decent bit of power. He's fairly fast. He's an excellent player. Wally Berger just did what we needed him to do. If Did he play a tiny bit worse than he did for the Cubs? Yes. Do I care? Not in the least. We got a good center fielder that hit for a good bit of power and got on base, and that's a key for us. Joe Cronin. What a pickup he turned out to be. Now, Cleveland got a pretty good package for him. No, this is Thouser Davis. Yeah, Schilling isn't that impressive. I think Kautrowski is probably rookie of the year. Like, I don't know anybody else off the top of my head, but it seems pretty unlikely that anybody else can compete with him. It just doesn't seem likely to me. Ben Chapman is becoming replaceable. Potentially. He's still got a base at a ridiculous clip. Um, He's still played decent defense. I'm not going to place him yet, but Chapman does look vulnerable. Let's be clear. Frankie Crosetti is benefiting from this. From his incredible range. But he also makes a bunch of errors. Crow is our shortstop for now. He's probably not long term a great shortstop. Which is fine. A good bench. All contributed to one degree or another. Well done all of you. Let's talk about the pitching staff. Stops. Slim Jones probably has a good chance to win the Cy Young. And I expect like many of these pitchers of this kind that he will flame out pretty spectacularly. But that's generally what happens to these former Negro League pitchers. Like, I think one of the funniest things is DZ Dean looks like a bad pitcher only compared to Slim Jones. He has been a phenomenal draft pick for us. Because you remember, we we struggled with who to take in 1930. We struggled mightily. But we made the right choice. 
Van Mungo, Roy Parmley had great years. Bill Swift was a fantastic reliever. Oh, no, he was a starter, excuse me. He had a good season, too. For a guy pitching as many innings as Leon Riley does, I'd like him to be a little more dominant. The walks are a problem. Your strikeout to walk ratio for a major league pitcher should never be one. I'm just going to put that out there. But he still had a pretty good season. I'm not complaining too much. Slim Jones is my biggest concern going into next season. His arm will fall off. That's it's just what happens. And while we do have Lucky Gomez back, and he can probably fill in as a fairly competent starting pitcher, it might be time to give one of our youngsters a chance. I don't know. Colton Joe DiMaggio. He had a really good season. Really good. Um, this is a big offseason for us. Because we're going to start thinking about who plays which positions going forward. We are so fortunate to have such an amazing team. Um... Look, does it suck that we didn't get anything accomplished in the in the World Series? Of course it does. I'm not going to sit there and tell you that I'm happy. But the problem is, until we get a big-time right-handed power bat... Hi, Joe. Um, we're always going to be loaded behind the curve just because how much our, our park punishes left-handed power bats. But... That is it for today's episode. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the series. If you are, please remember to like and subscribe. Comment down below. Um, we have a surprise video on Wednesday, which I wasn't planning on doing, but I, I don't want to spoil the surprise, other than to say it will be a board game. Um, I was going to do Last Train Home, but I found a better train game instead. Um, until next time, this has been Guardian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you.